and we're currently up to chapter 5. Chapter 5 being about Hercules. So let me get the big boy on screen. Oh! Little, it's a little too big. There he is. I don't know who else is going to be at this chapter, we'll see. We'll see. Currently it's just Hercules. Let me get my reading light on and we'll be good to go. You might ask yourself why I didn't have that on to begin with? I don't know. Anyway. <clears throat> oh boy. Sorry, I'm just uh, pre-reading just in case and... Oh boy. In for a doozy. Hang on, how long is this chapter? Oh god. This is longer than the Hades one. Okay. Hang on. Is chapter six does chapter six compensate? Oh no, chapter six is just as long. <laughs> oh fuck. Alright, we'll we'll see if we can do two again today. We'll see. It might take an hour or so. Let's begin. I can't let it go. Every time I close my eyes, I see Meg forced to sit at his feet. I see the graceful curve of her body as she bends like it was created to occupy that position. I see the possessive way he strokes her hair, possessive and controlling. No matter that he walked in on us, no matter that, that he apparently wanted her to have sex with me, no matter that I don't understand anything about what the fuck happened in that room. No, that's a lie. I understand the triumph written all across his beautiful face when he called her from me and she obeyed. I understand the frustration and anger on her face too. She's trapped. This guy has some kind of hold on her. One. I recognize right down to my bones. I know all about being stuck in a place that slowly strangles the life out of a person. Like Mount Olympus, right? Right? About what pieces of yourself you have to cut off in order to gain your freedom. Oh, oh wait, wait a second. I left parts of myself back in Olympus. Holy shit. He's, he's really from Mount Olympus. Yo, what a revelation, holy shit. I can rest easy now, knowing that he's actually from Olympus and he's not just some guy. But, I count the cost worth it. I'm free, after all. Unlike Meg. Unlike Leda. Impossible not to conflate the two. Even though their situations are hardly similar. Leda was attacked. Meg is... I'm not really sure what's going on. All I know is that a powerful man holds her leash and orders her to do things like fuck strangers. I thought she enjoyed, and she enjoyed what we did, but knowing the context, I can't be sure. If he forced her, can she even give consent? The thought that I might be more like my father than I could have dreamed haunts me. I can't sleep. I can't focus on work and keep making stupid mistakes. I even go so far as to type out a text to letter. Though, I have enough control left not to send it. It's not fair to look on her to make me feel better. I promise not to contact her again, and I will keep that promise. Again and again, my mind goes back to Meg. If she's as trapped as I fear. Who is Letta, by the way? I know it was like his previous like ex-girlfriend, but who... Like, is she... From Mount Olympus? Is she like a demigod as well, or is she just some like... I I, I don't know if she was in the movie. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe she was in the movie, I don't know. I need I desperately need to rewatch this movie. Apparently this is the after scenes version of the movie, apparently. Anyway. Smarter to leave it alone. If I couldn't make a difference as Zeus's son, can I really make a difference as a nameless waiter in a city that's not my own. Nameless waiter, he's fucking Hercules! I, like, <laughs> we just glancing over the fact that this man can lift tables with his pinky finger? Like, 
nameless waiter. Why is he even a waiter? I don't even have money to offer as payout, though I suspect no amount of money would make a difference. I've seen that man's type before. I used to know plenty of men like him, ambitious and cruel, and willing to trample over anyone who gets in their way. People like me. People like Meg. It takes all of two days to figure out who he is. Hey, he's fucking Hades! How do you not know who he is? Hades. The owner of an exclusive club called the Underworld. Okay. Alright. So we... <laughs> We're bouncing back and forth here a little bit. Alright. So one. You're telling me that Hades is just a club owner. All right, let's not talk about the fact that he's, you know, god of the underworld, all right? He's just he just owns a club called Underworld. All right? You know? But Hercules over here, fucking son of Zeus. <laughs> just wait for the club. Oh my god. Yo, when fucking Hercules has to go into the underworld. Oh man. Oh man. I imagine the underworld is probably just like this um big old big old titty bar. That's my that's my that's my guess of what the underworld is. <laughs> At least this book's context of the underworld. Anyway, I spend far too long looking at his picture on the website. The a website. <laughs> Web website. <laughs> Guess again. Oh my god. I, I I swear to god, if Hades owns like the most normal nightclub in the world, then it, there's nothing there's nothing weird. There's nothing smutty about it. It's just a nightclub for listening to the music, dancing, and like ordering drinks, and that's that's it. There's nothing no, like nothing crazy about it, alright? That would throw me for a loop. Anyway. Fucking... <laughs> Hercules over here looking at Google Chrome. Uh, the distinguished silver in his hair. Silver in his hair? Now, my brother in Christ. Where... Where is the silver? <laughs> My guy is all fire. <laughs> Alright, Hades, go away, go away for now, Hades. I don't need you yet. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> um Yes, his distinguished silver in his hair and the classy black frame glasses. <laughs> glasses. What is this Hades? What, what is this Hades? Oh my god. He's attractive. Really attractive. His mouth curved in the same soft smile he'd worn when he caught me eating his woman's pussy. Makes my stomach clench in a way that's not altogether unpleasant. Like he knows a secret that I don't. And finding out will either please me greatly or be something I regret for the rest of my life. There is no middle ground there. I should crave that any more than I should desire Meg. Well, I shouldn't crave that any more than I should desire Meg, a woman who only fucked me because she was ordered to. Yet, when my day off rolls around, I find myself pushing through the doors into the building that houses the underworld. Oh, so the underworld is is a night is a nightclub inside of uh, another building okay okay oh boy shit we're actually we're, man talk about plot development we're already at the club holy fuck that was fast <laughs> just talking about it like two paragraphs ago i half expected some victorian house that looked haunted and full of secrets but it's a site it's a skyscraper in the middle of downtown down downtown what the, the, the sky, sky, sorry skyscraper <laughs> the lobby is like a thousand other lobbies. Tile. Oh, wait. Tile in neutral colors and... Wait. 
Why is there a hyphen there? Anyway, it's like a thousand other lobbies. Tile and neutral colors and elevators. That's it. I check the directory and head to the correct elevator bank. It's only when the doors close. Wait, why is that? It's only when the doors close me in... Oh, right. It's only when the doors close me in that it hits me. How out of line I am. Whatever game Megan Hades played, it was obviously between them. I didn't ask for an audience, but it's not like I would have objected. Given the right circumstances, I don't mind being watched. Hell, I like it. Charging in here to save Meg is high-handed at absolute best, and deliriously misguided at worst. I should turn around and walk out and move on with my life. I should, but I don't. The doors open, and I walk straight to the desk situated in the middle of an empty room. It houses a black man who is possibly the most beautiful person I've ever laid eyes on. His dark skin is so flawless, I'm half convinced that he doesn't actually have pores. He wears a suit that's worth about six of what? That's worth about six of the one on my body. Oh, right. Wait, Hercules is in a suit right now? Oh my god. He gives me a similar rake of his gaze, and then presents a wide smile. Uh, oh shit. Um, he's, he's voiced. Uh, this is actually, I should probably mention, this is actually a fucking new person. Uh, I mentioned this the other day, where it's like, is there going to be a third, like, oh, sorry, a fourth person that gets voiced? And yeah, this, this person. Simply Lawful, welcome to the stream. We're currently reading a, um, a book. A book about Hades, Meg, and Hercules. Although, do keep in mind, this book is a little above the age of 18, so... Just... Just be mindful. This is a mature stream for mature audiences. Although, I'm taking this very immaturely. Uh... What can I help you with, handsome? Why, well, you got a strange voice. Well, I'm here to save Meg. If we can have a conversation, maybe it will dial back the protective impulses that drove me to this lobby in the first place. If I can reassure myself that she's not trapped, that maybe I understood what happened after we had sex in that apartment, maybe then I can let this whole thing go. His face snaps into, uh, into coldly professional lines. I'll see if she's available. Please sit. I turn and find a cleverly hidden bench in the same, uh, in the same stone as the floor. A waiting room can be its own kind of defense, its own kind of weapon. It sets up the power dynamics before an audience is ever granted. I recognize that, but I don't have a choice to do anything except play this game. I settle down to wait. In the end, it doesn't take long. Ten minutes after I arrive, the man clears his throat. You may go in. Uh, uh, thank you. I move around the desk to the large black door. It's meant to intimidate, and it's it's successful. My nerves try to get the best of me, but I shove them down and fall back into my old habit of, ma of masking my expressions. A vital survival tactic in what my father likes to call his court. I wonder what Hades calls his inner circle, but that thought has no place here. I push open the door and walk into the next room. Nice music change on that on that dramatic entrance. I'm not sure what I expect. With a name like the Underworld, it could go a number of ways. Instead, it looks like any bar in some high-end spot. Booths line the walls, each tucked back into the dark gray walls and shrouded, shrouded in shadows. Except for a single small stylized chandelier that hangs over each. They're all different shapes and styles, but each is made of silver and has either glass or crystal pieces mudding the light. It's a startlingly classy effect, considering I know what goes on in this place. What goes on in this place, Hercules? It's a normal club. 
There's nothing weird about it. So far I've seen nothing raunchy about this club. I don't see... Hercules, what are you talking about? The rest of the floor is much better. Lit with the circular bar acting as the main attraction. It showcases a wide array of alcohol options that border a giant marble sculpture that's... I blink. It's almost abstract, but I'm certain that it's depicting an orgy. Okay, Hercules, it doesn't take long for you to figure out what an orgy is. Come on, Hercules, pull yourself together, what are you doing? It's, it's a statue of people fucking. What catches and holds my attention is the man lounging against the bar, his black-on-black -black suit somehow making him look ever more distinguished than the last time I saw him. Hades? What the hell? He arches a brow at me. Uh, hang on. This feels like such a meme. It is a hilarious meme. Don't look so confused. You honestly think you can come to my front door and ask, oh, and ask after Meg? And I wouldn't know about it. He gives me the same half smile that's haunted me for days. Oh, I think we both know you're smarter than that. Maybe I am. Maybe I knew it would come down to seeing him again. I don't know. My stomach is twisting in on itself. A toxic combination of anger and self-righteousness and desire, making it hard to think. I clear my throat. Oh, I'd like to see her. So intent on my Meg. He motions. And a tall, curvy Latina woman appears behind the bar, deposits two drinks, and moves away. There's no one else in the room, so she must be trying to offer some privacy. Hades picks up the glass, and I can't help but notice the elegance of his hands. The graceful way he moves. He crooks his finger. I promise I won't bite. Unless you ask nicely. My blood rushes to my cock. Okay, Hercules, slow down there, old mate. What are you doing? And I don't fucking understand it. I mean... Hercules, you're telling me here. Alright. I should... I should want to knock this guy out. But something about him has my instincts misfiring. There's no fight or flight. It's flight or fuck. And even... <laughs> Sorry, that one got me. And even, and even in my current confusion, I know better than to play into the ladder. Do you now, Hercules? Do, do you? I don't know. I should know better than to play into the ladder. I don't think you do, Hercules. I don't think you do. I think this is going to go a different way. Hades sighs. Fine. I'll take on the role of the bad guy. Either you sit, have a conversation with me, and I decide whether or not I want my Meg around you. Or I call in Alceto, and she escorts you out. It's really that simple. I don't know who this Alceto is. Neither do I, Hercules. Who is Alceto? Who is this person? Oh god, Hercules, no. Hercules, how far you've gone. Man Olympus, no. <laughs> but I'm too focused on the first part of his sentence to worry about her. Uh, Meg is a person, not a pet. You don't get to decide who she, who she does or doesn't talk to. Meg is both a person and a pet. There goes that smile again. The one that seems to say he's enjoying a private joke that I have no access to. Sit, Hercules. My body snaps to attention, obeying the sharpness in his command before I can decide if I want to. I stride to him, and his smile widens. What a good boy you are. He tilts his head to the side, studying me in a way that makes me feel like he can see beneath my clothes. I wonder... Would you kneel if I told you to? Uh, no, no, no! I snarl, to cover up the truth. I'm not sure what I would do. 
I can almost feel the bite of the floor through my jeans. I mean, careful where that floor is biting, Hercules. The weight of his hand on my head. The same way he touched Meg that night. It makes my chest ache, and I don't understand why. Another of those shrugs that means everything, and nothing at all. I suppose we'll find out. Uh, I want to see Meg. He takes a sip of his drink and raises his eyebrows reluctantly. Oh, sorry. Reluctantly, I pick up mine and do the same. It's scotch. See, I'm not a, I'm not a drinker, so I don't really know what a, you know, what scotch tastes like. But I'm assuming it would burn my throat. A very, very expensive scotch. I lick my lips, going still at the predatory way he watches my movement. I want to see Meg. I repeat. Yes, yes, all in good time. He leans back against the bar. Let, let's be honest between the two of us, shall we? You don't want to see Meg. You want a whole lot more than that. How can he know that, when I don't even know what I want? I take another drink to cover up my mixed responses. Why do you think that? Simply lawful, I don't know. Her Hercules is kind of swinging all over the place right now. I don't know what, I don't know what he's going to do. <laughs> Getting close to the end of this chapter though, so he's, he's going to have to pick something. I have many talents. Reading people is one of them. You, my dear boy, got your head spun around by Meg's pussy. I can't blame you. She's divine, isn't she? The, don't talk about her that way. Even if I dream about her pussy. <laughs> Sorry, I had to turn. The, there was a pause because I had to turn the page there. <laughs> so I was on the other page. <laughs> even, even if I wish I hadn't dicked around for the first 15 minutes of our acquaintance. So I go. Oh, even if I wish I hadn't dicked around the first 15 minutes of our acquaintance, so I got more time with her taste on my tongue. It's more than that. He's making it sound cheap and dirty. I mean, it, it was. Hercules, what do you, it was. <laughs> He's making it sound like what happened that night is exactly what I'm afraid of. He leans close and I realize that he's actually an inch shorter than me. Oh, you're, t you're hold on. I just realized hey, Hercules isn't on screen. Hang on, sorry. He he's an inch shorter, yeah. All right, gotcha. Gotcha. There he is. Hercules is a wide ladder. Right? He's very wide. Uh, he seems so much larger than life. It's strange to look down on those dark eyes. Hades smiles slowly. For such a smart boy, you're awfully dense. I can talk about Meg however I damn please. She's mine, Hercules. I own her. I told her to fuck you that night, so she did. If I stripped her naked and set her on this bar and lined up every member of the underworld and let them fuck her one right after the other. She'd thank me for it. Just like she did after she fucked you. Good God, her fucking Hades, Jesus. He lowers his voice, still so close that her chest's damn near brush. I can do every single dark and twisted Thing I want to our Meg. He used the word our. And she has no choice but to comply. Anger finally derails my attraction to him. Oh, fucking finally! If what he's saying is true, and what little evidence I have supports it, then she truly didn't have a choice that night. <laughs> A.W. coming in with the Hey Dussie. Better watch out, man. Hades do have that big old ussy. I think I think the term would better sit to uh, Hercules for the Herculussy. 
Wait, we had some Herculade last night. I don't want to think about Herculade coming out of the Herculusy. Anyway. Uh, my stomach lurches and I clench my fists. I won't let you hurt her again. I can't go back in time to take back what happened between us. But I'll do whatever it takes to ensure she's not put in that position again. Something flashes in his eyes. There and gone too quickly for me to identify. Shit, who the fuck is talking right now? Oh yeah. I won't let her go. I suppose we find ourselves at an impasse. He finishes his drink, and I try my best not to watch the way his throat moves when he swallows. What a shame. He starts to turn away. What? Wait. Yes? Is he holding his breath? I can't be sure. I down the remainder of my drink, letting the alcohol buzz through my veins. Though it doesn't give me nearly as much courage as I'd like. I heard you make deals. Hades turns fully back to face me and steeples his fingers. You heard correctly. I'll make a deal with you to free Meg. He taps his fingers against his lips. Meg is very dear to me, Hercules. I'm not sure what you could possibly offer that would make me give her up. I don't possess anything of worth. Not anymore. If I were still in Olympus... He's so weak, fucking... Like, he, he... Call his dad, please! Like, be like, hey dad, I'm in the underworld. Oh no, not the real underworld. Some club, some shady club in like New Orleans. Yeah, I need you to pick me up. Send me a couple of bucks. I, I got Hades here on the line. Need... <laughs> like, like, I still don't get this. Like, cause it's, there's like this weird mix. So it's like modern day, um, but Hades has like silver hair, thick, thick rimmed glasses. He's like a fucking businessman. All right, that runs a club, okay? in his like fucking business suit or whatever and uh Hercules while being a like underpaid waiter of a restaurant nearby still has connections to Mount Olympus and his dad Zeus like what <laughs> how the fuck it, if anything it feels like Hades is the one out of place here but like I oh, mean Come on, come on, Hercules. What are, you, what are you doing? I still have access to resources and more money than even Hades could bring to the fore. Hades. Olympus. I stopped short. I hadn't even made the connection before now. That, that, that we're not in Kansas anymore, maybe? Hercules? Maybe? Surely it's not coincidence that Hades goes by that name. The one shared by the boogeyman in Olympus. Be a good boy, or Hades will get you. It's not a threat I've been on the receiving end since I was a small child. Or I would have made the connection sooner. Hades isn't supposed to be a real person. For all that he's technically one of the one of the thirteen. If he existed, I would have known about it. Uh, Hades! So, okay, alright. I'm starting to understand now. This Hades isn't... Isn't, you know, THE Hades. He's not... He's not fucking, you know, th this Hades from the Disney movie that's God of the Underworld. No, this this Hades in the book is so your average Joe who just happens to own a club that was co that's coincidentally called the Underworld and his name just happens to be Hades. Now, unrelated to Mount Olympus and Greek mythology. He's just... He's just some guy. All right. But that still doesn't explain Hercules. <laughs> that does, why? Hades might get away with it, but I don't know how Hercules is getting away with this. Anyway. Um, he seems, oh, he seems to change. Oh, shit. 
He seems to sense the change in me and raises his brows. That's my name. D do you have some connection to Olympus? Just like that, he goes as icy as he was the first moment we met. Cold. So fucking cold. Uh, you, uh, oh wait. If you're afraid of making a deal, then stop wasting my time. I have more important things to be doing at the moment. I have nothing to offer him. Not really. My trust fund is long gone. And... <laughs> Hercules having a trust fund? Hades doesn't seem the type to be swayed by a series of commas and zeros. No, he wants something more, which is a damn problem. I have nothing, except... I take a deep breath. Uh, you can have me. I can have you? He studies me. The devil is in the details, my boy. I'm going to need you to be a significantly more specific. I suddenly clear my throat. I mean, you can have me, however you want to take that. It's only right. A way to balance the scales of the wrong I've done. The mistakes I've made. Penance. Like, like running away from home, perhaps? From Man Olympus? To work at a restaurant? <laughs> There's a sweet relief in that, in giving up control so completely. I don't understand it, but in the end, my feelings don't matter. Helping Meg does. You mean... I... Uh, I can fuck you? He circles me slowly. A predator going in for the kill. I can shove my cock between those pretty lips of yours. I can do whatever I please to your cock. I can place your ass whenever and however I like. Holy fuck, Hades. I was not, I was not prepared for that. He stops in front of me again, seemingly unaffected by the words he just launched at me like daggers. Is that what you mean? When you say I can have you? Uh, yes. It takes me two tries to keep speaking. Uh, if that what it if that's what it takes. A better man would turn you away. Forced consent is hardly consent. He smiles suddenly. A full smile that rocks me on the back of my heels. You're a terrible negotiator. Truly awful. I accept your terms. You're mine. And I no longer force Meg to follow my commands against her will. I swallow hard trying to think. Th that's a very specific sentence. Where'd that come from, Hades? What the f- I mean, Hercules, what the fuck? Yes, well, I- I am not terrible at negotiating. He raises his voice. Tis another round. We're sealing a deal with a drink. The woman appears again, this time with the bottle. She pours a healthy splash into his glass and then into mine, gives me a sharp look, and disappears around the curve of the bar again. I reach for my drink and pause. His words seem fine on the surface. I do this, and he can't force Meg anymore. She won't have to fuck strangers unless she wants to. She won't have to follow Hades' orders anymore. Surely, she'll be happy to be free? I can't think straight. Not with the scotch in my system. Though, Hades' presence is more to blame than the muddled way my thoughts run together than the alcohol. I frowned at him. D d do you wanna fuck me? He- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. He gives me that blinding smile again. As if I've done something to amuse him greatly. Hades sets down his drink. And reclaims the final step between us. 
He grips my neck. The strength of his fingers surprising. So is my reaction. My cock goes hard. And I have to fight back a moan. What the fuck? Poor baby sub. You don't even know what you are, do you? He tisks. Don't worry. I'll teach you. Th teach me what? Everything. I don't know what he means. Not really. I just know that I suddenly want it. Oh, okay. We'll seal it with a kiss then. He murmurs against my mouth. But he doesn't follow through like I expect. I belatedly realize he's waiting for confirmation. I nod as much as I am able to with the way he grips my neck. Y yes, I'll seal it with a kiss. Good boy. There is no teasing touch of his tongue. He simply takes my mouth as if it has been his all along. He forces me wide open for him and plunders me with his tongue. I lift my hands, or lift my shaking hands, and fist them in his perfectly blank shirt. Though, I can't say for certain whether I'm clinging to him to steady myself, or trying to get trying to get him closer. In the end, it doesn't matter. He releases me and steps back, leaving me swaying on my feet. Hades' smooth shirt. Oh, Hades smooths down his shirt and then fixes his glasses, where they have been knocked off center by our kiss. Tis will get you up to your new room. One of my other people will give you the tour. That stamps me out of my haze. What? Hercules gives Hercules gives me a pitting look. What? I didn't skip anything, right? This is this is Hercules' chapter, though, isn't it? Why is he Why is he speaking in third person suddenly? What? <laughs> oh, that's supposed to say Hades. <laughs> Sorry, there's a typo here. I mean, hallelujah, this is what I was waiting for. Hades gives me a pitying look. Come now, Hercules. You didn't think you'd bargain away yourself to me, and then go back to your sad little life, did you? Call in and quit your job. My people will gather your belongings, and see to your apartment. The underworld is your home now. Yo, and then to like, uh, cut away from the Hercules Hades action, we've got a chapter about Meg. So that was, uh, that was an interesting chapter. We got to see the underworld finally and how it's just a, just a club. The only like raunchy thing in the club is the fucking, the, the orgy statue and that's about it. Weird. Anyway. Moving on to chapter 6, considering I d how much time do I have? Oh yeah, it's about normal. And chapter 6 isn't isn't too terribly long. Um, Hang on. Wait, this first line isn't being said by Meg. Who's saying this? Did you hear about a new guy? I look up from the spreadsheet detailing the underworld's income last month. I wasn't sure what the disruption of Balthazar's territory would do for uh, for our bottom line. Coops in Caver City make everyone nervous, and nervous people will either drop mad cash or button it up completely. Judging from the accounts list I have, they went with the former. Thank fuck. I drag my attention back to the present to find Tink. Tink? Like, Tinker Bell? Anyway, to find Tink standing in the doorway to my office. She's a victim to one of many deals Haiti has made over the years. I don't know the terms of this specific one. I rarely know the details, unless he feels the need to, or feels I need to. But. 
she's fit right into life here at the club, while still running her stylist business during the day. She's also a, deli a delicious little plus-size bond, with the taste of for pain, bondage, and group play. Add in snark and total disrespect for most authority, and she's my kind of gal. It takes a moment for her words to penetrate. Even then, I don't comprehend them. What did you say? Well, I'm not going to change my voice now. <laughs> Hades has a new guy starting up tonight. From the gossip. Tis had. Uh, tis had hot from the beginning, source. Oh, shit. Man, I'm really fucking this one up. Hades has a new guy starting tonight. From the gossip, tis had. Uh, hot from the source. He doesn't even know he's a sub. And I'm expected to give him a crash course in BDSM before the club opens. She crosses her arms underneath her breasts. I don't get paid enough for this shit. Meg, I, I really don't. Why does he have you training instead of one of the dominants? Instead of me. I don't handle every new sub we hire. But if they're important enough to be brought in because of a deal, then I should be. Uh, she said Hades is handling that part of his training personally. What? We can negotiate hazard pay once he's up uh, once he's up to par and working, I say absently. A new hire from Hades means one of his deals. Normally every employee who the underworld hires goes through me, whether they're dominant, submissive, or just looking to bartend. It's one of my most important functions. As the person who manages this place. Oh! Oh, this is the BDSM club. Oh, okay. No, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Because the, 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 there was a fucking little paragraph right at the start. Where was it? Yeah. Hades wouldn't have owned a super sweet BDSM club if it wasn't for you two. Yeah, so that... There was a little thank you message. So now I get what the underworld is. Okay, I understand now. I got, I got it, Buttony. I got it. I've cracked the code. Hiring out subs and doms. An interesting, interesting club. Um, BDSM, in all its flavors, requires an incredible level of trust from all participating, par participating parties. If the wrong person were to become involved, well... It hasn't happened since I've been here. We get assholes sometimes, but no one who actively ignores the rules, both explicitly stating, or stated and generally understood. Anyone who plays here is guaranteed a consensual good time, no matter what they're looking for. Which means, I need to check this guy out before tonight. Hades wouldn't actively undermine our operation, but he often has... But he often plays deeper games that make my life difficult, sending a submissive who doesn't realize they're a submissive, even out into the lounge without the proper preparation is a recipe for disaster. Training them himself. He hasn't been that hands-on in training since I was new here. What the hell is going on? I blink to find Tink still watching some still watching me with her pretty green eyes. Or is there something else? I'm coming up to the end of my contract. She- Ah, oh, fuck, that was the other way around. Was there something else? I'm coming up to the end of my contract. She props her hands on her hips, drawing my attention away from her floral romper and black strappy heels. Man, floral romper is definitely a word I'm going to use later. A black cropped jacket pulls the outfit together, just like Tink always seems to. She makes my suit and slinky dress feel mundane sometimes, but no one can pull off fashion the way she does. I lean back. Two months? You're not quite there yet. Uh, compared to the last four years and change, uh, two months is almost the end. She considers me. Is staying on an option? I blink. Tink hates Hades, actively loathes him. I can't imagine she would want to consent to work for him unless under duress. 
Do you want to stay on? Uh, I don't know yet. She shrugs. I'm exploring my options. If I were a better person, I'd guide her out the doors and tell her to never look back. Tink was meant for greater things than working as a combination assistant manager, costume designer, submissive, and general fire put outer. I mean, she is also supposed to help Peter Pan, right? <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, assuming this is the same Tink, I don't know. I don't know. This could be a different Tink for all I know. I'm not a better person. She's worth her weight in gold, and I'd be a fool to let her go. Of course, you'll always have a place here. Oh, okay then. She nods a little too fast. My shift starts at 8, but I'm going to give this dude a rundown at 7. Does he know that? He's staying in the building. I'm not expecting that, though I should. Tink also lives here, courtesy of the terms of her deal. Of course, this new toy for Hades will be under our roof. I'll talk to him now. Oh shit, fuck. It's really confusing when they don't have, like, who's talking right after they talk. Anyway. I'll talk to him now. Thanks. She turns and disappears through the door. I stare blindly at my office. I've put this room together over the years. It's the one place in the underworld that's mine, that I earned through actions and time and trust from my employees. I indulge myself with the pretty teal color on the walls. The one that makes me think of the trip Hades and I took to the Maldives on our first anniversary. I don't like clutter over- oh, I don't like clutter over much. So all the important information is filed away in the classy cabinets that I have locks on each door. I keep my desk clear, which isn't a positive right now because my hands itch to fiddle with something and there's nothing but my computer marrying the smooth mahogany surface. There's no help for it. I'm going to be able to focus. Oh, I'm not going to be able to focus until I've gotten to the bottom of this particular mystery. I could ask Hades directly, but I can't guarantee he'll tell me the truth. Beyond that, I'm curious. Sure, that's it. Simple curiosity. As I push to my feet, I take a moment to be honest with myself. I'm a little jealous too. It doesn't make sense. And it's not something I'll ever admit, but I like that only being Tink and me here as permanent deal-related employees. As Tink said, she's up in two months. I can't imagine what that would be like. Mine is a lifetime contract. There's no end in sight, and I made my peace with that a long time ago. No use thinking about it now. I make sure to lock my office doors before I head down uh, the back stairs to the employee floor. It houses a dozen apartments, though only five were in use until today. I step through the door to find Alceto leaning against the wall. Oh, here's Alceto. Holy shit. She raises a dark brow and pushes her long black braids over her shoulder. Uh... That doesn't take you long. She's a beauty. Like all Hades Furies. Wait. Furies, right? Not fairies? Unless Hades owns fairies as well. I mean, I don't know. Hades could be into that. Hades is into a lot of things. Anyway, she's a beauty like all Hades... Hades' Furies are me, Alceto, and... Tis a phone. Now, you could have just wrote this a phone. But no. Tis a, tis a phone. Anyway. Her dark skin is flawless. And she wears a sports bra. And high-waisted workout pants. Ob obviously she's on her way to the gym. I could play it cool. But she and Tiz are close to sisters. Uh, are as close to sisters as I've ever had. I lean around her to look down the empty hallway. Don't act like you're not curious, too. Alceta gives me a sly smile. You should go and introduce yourself. He's in number six. Near sister or not, I don't trust that look on her face. 
What do you know? Nothing much. She bypasses me and heads down the stairs where the gym is located. More than you. I wait a full three seconds. I then stalk down the hallway to the door with the stylized six on it. I raise my hand and then reconsider. Something about this whole situation sends warning bells tolling through my mind. It doesn't make any sense. Surely I have nothing to be afraid of. I knock briskly. I can stall longer. Oh, I knock briskly before I can stall longer. I listen to the heavy footsteps approach from the other side of the door and find myself holding my breath. And then the door opens, and the very last person I expect to see stands there, his blonde hair a little messy, like he's been running his fingers through it, his blue eyes going wide at the sight of me, his mouth curving into a smile. But, Mac? I, Hercules? He barely seems to register my shock, grabbing my hands and towing me into the apartment. It's decorated, like all the unoccupied ones are tasteful neutrals, and welcoming furniture that's just as comfortable as it looks. Hercules releases me almost instantly, but I can still feel the imprint of his hands on mine. More than that, I can still feel his tongue rolling over my clit. That was like four days ago. What the fuck? <laughs> my god, Meg. His cock filling me. Again, like, I don't know if it even did that. He, he came in like two seconds his strong hold, keeping me in place as he fucks me just like I commanded him to. He looks at me like I'm the greatest gift he's ever given, or he's ever been given. Uh... He, he followed through on his promise. I honestly wasn't sure he would. Surely I'm misunderstanding this. Surely Hades didn't do what I'm beginning to suspect. He did. His promise? Your freedom. I stare. He looks so incredibly proud of himself. A golden retriever expecting to be praised for his good behavior. Did I really think... Uh, this guy might be a good one? I really should know better by now. I take a careful step back and cross my arms over my chest. Let me see if I have the strength. You decided to bargain yourself away for a woman you just met. Y yes without talking to her and figuring out what she wanted. He's starting to realize he might have misjudged things. Hercules flushes. Uh, I saw him way away with him. Uh, you both admit it. Uh, what you... Uh, wait, shit. Well, I saw the way you were with him. You both admit it. What he made you do to... What he... Fuck! This is, it's really hard to keep this voice up for longer than like a millisecond. You both admitted what he made you do with me. I had to do the right thing. The right thing? The right thing? I hold my- I shake my head slowly. You're an idiot! Hercules' blue eyes go stormy. Don't talk to me like I'm a stupid teenager. You know, with the voice I'm giving him, it's pretty accurate. Then stop acting like one. I have to turn away. To regain control of my tone, screaming at him might feel good for a few moments, but he truly doesn't understand. In the end, it's like kicking a puppy, and I feel worse for doing it. I press the heels of my hands into my eyes. How long? What? How long did you give him? A year? Three? Five? Seven? His silence gains weight. I turn back to find him staring at me as if he's never seen me before. I, I gave him forever, Meg. A, a full trade. Me for you. Hit my breath. Oh, my breath leaves me in a whoosh. A lifetime. Who is this guy that Hades is willing to lay out those terms? I don't know. There was a time when he would have told me his plans. Would have sketched them out in all of their intricacies and filled me with wonder at how devious his mind was. No longer. The distance between us is too great these days, both of us moving about our lives separately with deliciously painful clashes that hurt more than they help. Even with that, I thought we were still partners. Dysfunctional ones, yes, but equal in, equals in our own way. Silly me. 
I should have known better than to trust anyone at this point. Even him. Especially him. You should have talked to me first. I say weakly. You, you don't understand. Uh, help me understand. He cautiously takes my hand and tugs me away from the couch, as if he's going to comfort me. This man makes absolutely no sense. He's the one in more trouble than he obviously understands. He's the one Hades has conned. I'm the one who should be con confronting, or uh, comforting him. But I didn't beg for him to save me. He didn't ask. He just took one look at us and assumed he knew every knew us, and assumed he knew a single damn thing about how our lives worked. He's a fool, and I don't suffer fools. Even when they're pretty enough to make me temporarily lose myself. Wait, hang on. Oh, now you're willing to slow down long enough to actually consider my opinion? I jerk my hand out of his. Does my damsel in distress roll up? Wait. Hang on, why is that a new... Okay. Does my damsel in distress roll allow for a speaking part? I, I don't get why you're pissed. Shouldn't you be happy? You just wanted out from under Hades, and now you can be. I laugh. A broken, sad sound. You have no idea what you're talking about. His confusion shifts to anger. His mouth goes tight. Uh, how the hell would I know what I'm talking about when you didn't talk to me? You say I didn't consider what you wanted, but you did the exact same thing to me. If you're telling the truth about not wanting to be saved, then stop for a second and think about how that night looked from my perspective. He said he made you fuck me, Meg, as in a forest. I understand what he's saying, but I'm reeling too hard to sympathize fully. So you... so... so you talk to me, we have a conversation. You don't jump head first into a deal with Hades because you've made the assumptions. And I didn't bother to fact check them before acting. I hold up my hand when he starts to speak. I, I, I can't do this right now. I, I have to go. I turn and walk away. I have to. Hercules might have fucked me, but he doesn't know me. He obviously doesn't want to know me either. Not the real me. He's looking for someone to save. And he assumed I fit the bill. It never occurred to him that he should ask first. I close the door behind me and take a slow breath. Anger is so much easier than guilt. I knew Hades had something else going on when he sent me after Hercules. And I did it anyways. I hadn't realized the misleading conclusions. Hercules would draw from the whole situation. But I should have. I knew he wasn't part of our world. I was too lost in my own experience to make sure he understood. Part of this is on me, but not all of it. It takes fewer than five minutes to climb the stairs to the level above the club to Hades' office. He keeps a room that's vaguely office-like on the club floor itself, but it's all for show and play. As secure as the underground is in general, it's not secure enough to leave vital business information where someone could just walk in. Locked doors or no, our clientele specialize in being in being where they shouldn't. So, Hades gives them a decoy office. No one has thought to question it yet. To see what they want to see. Oh, they see what they want to see, and they leave it at that. Hades is too powerful to fuck with. For them. I'm too angry to heed the warning. He and I are going to have words. But we're going to have them right fucking now. Oh shit. Cliffhanger, by the way because that's the end of chapter 6. To tease you a little bit, chapter 7 involves Hades. But, that's all the book is going to offer for now. I should have uh, swapped to Meg. I completely fucking forgot, by the way. Oh my god. They're having that whole talk, and I completely forgot to swap to Meg. Jesus Christ. You just... Well, alright, never mind. <laughs> Get him out of here. I hope you enjoyed the storybook reading for today. 
Interesting that, um, I learned a lot about Hades today. That Hades, he's not the god of the underworld. He's just a guy that unfortunately happens to have the name of Hades. Hercules, on the other hand, Hercules isn't your, you know, your average Joe that happened to be called Hercules. No, this is still the same Hercules that's the son of Zeus. Just found himself in like little Tokyo next to a ramen, next to a ramen store. I don't know what he's doing there. Hang on, let me, uh. Let me, let me swap things over to Mega Man real quick. There we go. Mega Man Battle Network. Alright. Yo, you to have a coffee? Alright. Good luck, Buttony. And I hope your shift goes well tonight as well. That's a... That's a very interesting read, though. Well, let me, uh, let me kill the Persona music. I'm telling you, though, that book, that book is getting pretty wild. The plot thickens even further.